할렐루야 할렐루야 성도 여러분 이 부활 Dear s o n g w a r Saints, this is the Thanksgiving worship uh, in commemoration of Resurrection Day. So let us uh, share our thanks and our greetings with the person next to you, to the left and to your right. Please greet them and please, and please uh, say hi. And please encourage each other that you will succeed in your worship. 감사합니다. So we are all very thankful that we have all come to worship uh, the Lord. So let us have the heart of God. Let us have one body and let us deliver our worship to God in this way. There are many worship centers that are, have all come together to worship at this time. So that, so that we can truly uh, offer a successful and acceptable worship to God. Let us gather our hearts and gather our strength. Let us strive for the success in this worship. Let us, let us make the effort for all more praiseworthy worship to God. And there are those indeed who have not who have not been able to come to us from their uh, respective worship centers and uh, because they needed to protect uh, their respective centers. Uh, nevertheless, let us give a round of applause out of uh, to commend them and to give them our acknowledgement. So let us give them our thanks. Now the Berians were of more noble character than the Thessalonians for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of the Jews believed as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. Amen! Oh my soul, let us protect our church. Oh my soul, let us protect our church. Oh my soul, let us protect our church.
Holy God the Father, on this day, we come before you in thanksgiving for the holy truth that the Lord had resurrected from the dead. We give thanks for the truth that you have resurrected from the dead. We ask that you accept this worship. Although all these things on this earth and our flesh will all disappear, we pray that you would guide us in your glory. You guide us through your glory. We pray that in truth and in the spirit and truth, uh, you would guide us in this worship. We pray that we would give you our worship. We pray that you would give us the overflowing of your grace and compassion in this worship. We pray that all enemies will be driven out in this worship. We pray we may succeed in this worship. We pray that you'd work in us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Yes, so we want to 
찬양 드리세 이 세상 국방이요 장친구 대신 주 예수 영원토록 찬양하네 예수 예수 늘 살아계셔서 주 동행하여 주시며 늘 말씀하시네 예수 예수 내 곳에 주 예수 내 맘에 살아계시네 늘 살아계시네 이 시간에 우리 참회 기도 드리겠습니다. During this time, let us deliver. A prayer of honest repentance to God. Let us make sure that there is no one who has any flaws or errors remaining before God. Let us cleanse all the things within our soul to God during this time of repentance to Him. Pudumajusiko, 주께서 우리의 기둥이 되시고 주께서 우리 마음의 경고함이 되시고 주께서 우리 마음에 참으로 하나님의 의가 되어 주시옵시고 우리 가운데서 모든 더러운 거 우리 가운데서 모든 흠 있는 거 우리 가운데서 모든 실수한 거 우리 가운데서 모든 하나님을 떠난 생각과 우리 자신의 고집이 있고 우리 자신을 정말 섬기왔던 모든 것을 하나님 제하여 주시옵시고 주께서 용서해 주시옵시고 주께서 품어 주시옵시고 오직 주님으로 대신 채워주시옵시고 주님의 모든 의로심과 주님의 모든 보혈의 큰 능력으로 우리를 역사하시고 도와주시옵소서 총관께 예배보는 모든 우리 성도들 하나님께서 은혜 중에 붙들어 주시옵시고 저들 안아주시옵시고 모든 악한 원수들의 생각과 모든 악한 원수들의 영향 가운데서 지켜주시고 보호해주시고 역사해 주시옵소서 주여 도와주시옵소서 도와주시옵소서 주여 역사해 주시옵소서 예수를 받도록 회개기도 드려옵나이다 아멘 
God who is our life and who has given us the resurrection, our God the Father. You have given us life during this day of the resurrection. And by the resurrection of the Lord, so we commemorate Him. We have come before you and we give you thanks and we give you praise and we give you the glory and honor. We pray that all of us who have come to worship may be full of your grace and truth during this time. We pray we may know your good, pleasing and perfect will and we may uh, give you a pleasing worship. We pray that the inspiration of heaven and the power of the resurrection may come upon us. We pray, we pray uh, in great labor and toil uh, uh, that we profess to worship you. And since you have uh, appointed this worship and you have appointed us, we pray we, you would uh, sanctify our spirits. And since the Lord has overcome the authority of death by the power of the resurrection and by the power of the blood, we pray that we may uh, become sanctified and we pray that our whole lives we may go towards the sign of the resurrection. We pray that you would help us since you, O oh Lord, are the God of order. And uh, we pray concerning those foolish people who are trying to do harm against this church. We pray that the Songwag people may not stumble in their faith, but by the word and by prayer, by, by, by the patience of Job, we pray that we may all persevere. We pray we may labor and toil, and we truly give you the thanks. We pray that you, O oh Lord, who are the resurrection, we pray by the power and glory of the blood and flesh of Jesus, by the power that you give us, we pray we may manifest your great and glorious power. We pray we may fulfill spiritual restoration in this church. And for over half a century, uh, we pray for the sake of the senior overseer, Shimon, whom you have used for the whole of this time. We give you thanks on his behalf. We pray that he may preach uh, the wisdom and knowledge and power of the law of the word of God and we may receive it all. We pray we may arm ourselves with the spiritual armor. We pray for the sake of the overseer um, whom you have anointed by the Holy Spirit that we may follow his direction that he leads. We pray for the grace, peace, and joy that you give. What we honestly ask of you, we honestly pray all these things of you in the name of Jesus Christ forever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Hallelujah! 
Let us encourage each other that we protect the church, that we all protect the church. Holy God the Father, we thank you. We thank you for this blessings that you have given us on this day. We pray for the sake of those families, the souls of those families that have given their, their holy construction offerings to you. We pray they have uh, given their offerings in a most active spirit to participate and to serve the body of this church. In the same way, we pray that you would give their spirits all your blessings and all your love. They have in faith delivered these offerings to you. We pray that you remember, remember all those who have thus given their offerings to you. We pray for all those who have thus uh, sought to construct and to help uh, edify the church in this way. We pray with the strength and help that you give them that they may fully uh, carry out the works uh, that you have uh, willed them to do. What we earnestly ask of you is that you remember those who have given all these holy offerings to you. We pray that your great grace and love will support their spirits. And to, uh, we pray that you remember all those and the souls of their families who have thus given their holy offerings to you. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ forever. Amen. May God bless all those in the name of Jesus Christ to those who have given their earnest and holy offerings to God. Hallelujah.
송주감. The pine bamboo rock address. When I come to the church the first time I was a young man, it was the following year that I attended and commemorated the day of the resurrection for the first time. At that time, members of the church had boiled and decorated several hundred chicken eggs and had given them to all the young students who had attended Sunday school. I myself would eat an egg on the occasion. The children would eat an egg once they had understood the symbolism and act of remembrance behind it. They would eat an egg as soon as they were given one. They would even put them in their pockets and take them home. But from time to time I would see some children who would take the eggs home without receiving any explanation. Just what is the relationship between the nicely decorated egg and the day of the resurrection? A decorated egg is only an egg that is dead. Just what kind of meaning does a decorated egg have? Of course, one can boil an egg out of courtesy because eggs can easily break if they are not properly boiled. But Jesus spoke the words, How often I wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings. These words spoken by Jesus were spoken out of concern for the sake of those who would not understand these words and so would not be saved. The egg of a chicken will dwell under the breast of the mother for 21 days and then hatch. The chick would then come out of the shell. No one outside the shell breaks it on the chick's behalf, but each chick will deliberately open up its wings and come out of the shell. The chick should come out as a strong and healthy chick, but if the chick abruptly comes out without properly forming its limbs and body, the chick will die after a few days, but the chick that has formed a healthy body will grow up to be a healthy chick. It appears the decorated egg used to ce celebrate the day of the resurrection has symbolic meaning to do with the chick finally coming out of the egg and then dwelling under the wings of the hen for incubation. This is the way the egg is used to symbolize the resurrection. This is the meaning of the resurrection. The chick is incubated and warmed when still under the still inside the egg, but then finally comes out of the egg to become a chick. The form of the chick is completely different from when it was inside and when it was outside. Likewise, on the day of the resurrection, the corruptible will clothe itself with the uncorruptible, and the flesh will clothe itself with a spiritual body. And the being of man that had barely survived each day will receive the life and eternal life that comes from the blood and flesh of Jesus Christ, respectively. Although in the past we had received hindrances in both time and space because of our flesh, our flesh will all suddenly be changed, like a small mist that can seep inside without any trouble regardless of whether there is a solid brick or a firmly locked door in this way, so we will also be free from all material hindrances. All of a sudden we will pass roughly 2.5 million years and we will go to meet with the Lord, who will come to us from heaven. We will meet Him in the air, we will meet Him there and we will become one with Him. He will go to judge the world and we will be with Him. The Lord Jesus will come as the King of Kings and the Lord of Judgment. He will judge the living and the dead. He will place the devil and his subordinates all into the fire of hell. Then the saints will judge those angels who are supposed to help them, but have become corrupt to become deceiving spirits. It may appear shameful to judge one's own angels, but this is the great authority given those who will gain the resurrection. Those who participate in the resurrection are those who will become the heirs of God along with Jesus Christ. As those who call God Abba Father, we will be guided by the Holy Spirit. We are those who must follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit wherever we lead. So I ask you today, are you readying yourselves and serving for the sake of the resurrection of the glory? Are you truly readying yourselves? The Word of God is found in John chapter 11, verse 24 to 26. The Word of God is found in John chapter 11, verse 24 to 26. Martha answered, I know He will rise again in the resurrection at the rise day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Amen. So that we can hear the word, let us pray earnestly to God. Let us pray that we, that God will use our spirits and that he will pour out his great authority and power to us. Let us pray that we may receive the great inspiration and power of the Lord. Let us pray honestly to God today.
주원과 함께 예배드리는 우리 모든 성도들의 마음을 하나님께서 받아주십시고 저들 영혼을 위하고 저들 영혼이 영생할 수 있도록 하나님의 영원하신 말씀으로 넣어주시옵시고 우리가 달게 먹고 또 이와 같이 먹고 마시는 우리 하나님으로 먹고 마시는 시간 되도록 역사하시고 인도하여 주시옵소서 하나님 아버지 Holy God the Father We pray that on this day of the resurrection in which we commemorate his resurrection we pray that all the Songwak people who have gathered here who have come together to worship you we give you thanks for this we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit into our hearts we pray that you would feed us we pray that you give us strength we pray that your word of truth may be understood by all of us we pray that you'd work your great power upon us we pray that none of the authority of death may remain within our spirits. In the name of Jesus Christ, we honorly pray. Amen. Let us read together the sermon outline from the title. Jesus is the resurrection. God is all-knowing and all-powerful. He sent Jesus Christ to the world so that through Jesus, we can know and have faith in God. Jesus came to do the will of the Father. This will is the resurrection. If we do not have the resurrection, our faith is empty. And our preaching to others so that they believe is also empty. Our service to the point of death and our being martyred for faith is futile. Our faith is the resurrection. You must hear and understand the question Jesus puts forward. Jesus spoke the words, I am the resurrection. Do you believe this? Life of service in the church that has no expectation or hope in the resurrection comes to nothing but religion. The resurrection alone is the truth and life of the Christian church. The Holy Spirit came to raise us from the dead. The Holy Spirit has come into each person, so you must experience Him. As part of the one body, receive His testimony through the gifts of the Holy Spirit. On the day Jesus comes again, what kind of resurrection will you attain? Will you attain to the resurrection of life or the resurrection of judgment? A person can say that he loves the Lord his whole life, but the one who has nothing to do with the Lord and does not attract his interest will face a day that is most fearful. In accordance with the words spoken by Jesus, we must believe in Him. This means that we must believe in the resurrection. After that day, the earth and the rest of the created universe will disappear. Our faith is the faith that overcomes death. The one who possesses the authority of death is the devil. Demons are his subordinates. If you have overcome the authority of death, then get rid of all demons. Amen. So this time, at this time, there has come a new, a new barrier book in the barrier series. He is... Jesus is the Lord. And so we will know that the previous book in this in this mini series was He is God. Jesus is God. So what is what is this? Humility. Humility through humility you will receive grace. So it says, Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. This does not mean in any way uh, material poverty or beggarly or religious poverty. No, it means that you are completely inadequate to pay back the debt for the grace that you have received. You are completely unable to pay it back. And so, in this sense, He is God. He is God. The people of the time only believed that He was the Nazarene. Yet, He is God. You must know and understand this truth, this reality. He is God and you have to believe this. And so, He, in His humility and obedience, He, he glorified God. 
And so, and so the contents of this book that he is, Jesus is Lord. And so what it, what are uh, the main contents we can say is that you must obey Jesus as the Lord, as the master. He is the master and you must obey him. You do not, you do not uh, understand or receive him in any rational way, but you merely obey him. And, and when we proclaim that he is God, whenever you hear this proclamation, you must be all the more humble. And so this is what the Lord himself has taught and exhorted. So I also encourage you that you all uh, read this book in our lives of faith, you must know how the Holy Spirit works and how the Lord Jesus himself works. You must experience all these things. And so if such an old person like me can, ri can, write, can write the contents, the spiritual contents of this book, how much more can you do so? So these, these books must be read. You cannot find these books anywhere else. So God is all-knowing and all-powerful. All things that have been done in this heaven and earth have been known in the knowledge of God. And the reason why God sent His Son into the world was that through the Son, he, he had particular things that He must fulfill within the will of God, that is the Son. There is no multiple sons of God. There is only one Son of God, the only begotten Son. And so God sent His only begotten Son into the world. And when, when He had sent Him into the world, and so all curses, misfortune, pain, agony, terror, this is the kind of place that God has sent His Son with all these things. And what did Jesus say? I came not to do my will, but to do of the Father who had sent me. Jesus came to do the work of the Son. He came to do the work of the Son. He came to do the will of the Father. Did the Son ever uh, ever wear and drink any prosperity? Did he any have, have, have any comforts in this world? Absolutely not. Even his close friends and relatives was trying to kill him. And he, when he was on this earth, had performed his three-year public ministry on this earth. He did not come to do his own private life or conduct his own private life, but only to do the work of the Father who had sent him. There is a difference between the public life and the private life. So when I had first received my ordination as a, as a pastor, I made it very clear and I made it clear even to myself that although I could do my own private life and, consume, and pursue my own private interests, but the moment I received ordination as pastor, I was fully fledged to follow my own public life. I could not, I could not do private things, even feed my own family or children. No, whatever I, whatever I did, I could not do out of my own interest or out of my own desires, but I must do, but I must do those things, I must do those things uh, in accordance with public life and public ministry. I do not say things out of private interests or private desires, no longer. I do not ask or say things, anything out of privacy. 
Why? Because I was fully dedicated to perform the public ministry and work that I was entrusted with. In the same way, Jesus performed or said nothing out of private desires or private life, but he performed his three-year public ministry and work. He came here and there, all, all, all his public life and all his public works and all these things were life to our spirits. All those deeds and words that he had spoken and did were life to our spirits. And this was all within his public life. And Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Again, he asked, who do people say I am? Who do the people say that I am? And once they understood, Jesus, Jesus spoke and made clear, this was revealed to you by the Father and not any man. And so God had commanded the man, do not eat, do not eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. For on that day that you eat of it, you will surely die. And the moment Adam had committed this sin, that he had disobeyed, his spirit had died and he had entered into death. However, through Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ had come in onto this earth, he came to do the will of the Father who had sent him. He did not do any of his private desires in the, and he did not do his own will. And so anybody who is stubborn to do his own desires and his own interest, he will, he will do nothing but perish. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. There is no life on this earth, on this created universe. Of course, there is light and darkness. There is life and death. There is this dichotomous relationship that oppose each other. This is what happens on this earth. There is no true joy on this earth. Although, although a man and a woman may promise happiness to each other on this earth, they can be frustrated with, with each other and they can give up on each other. So this is the nature of this created universe. This is what happens in this created universe. Although we strive to do those things that we need to do on this earth, we will do nothing but perish on this earth. There is no one that has survived, that has survived on this earth anymore that has been proportioned to him. We all perish on this earth. Whether it was Noah or Moses, they have all perished. And so, the one who rules by the earth, the rules by the authority of death. Jesus Christ overcame him because he is the resurrection and the life. He overcame by the resurrection. And so Jesus commanded, you may ask me for anything in my name. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. Why? Because he rose, he rose from the dead. And so, and so the, and so the, and so we must not seek what to eat and to drink. For all such things are only temporary and they will not last because they will all perish. And so God himself, he took away all these things from all those who had sought them. There is nothing on this earth that is eternal because they all perish and decay. So that eternal life, so that we can enter into this eternal life, Jesus rose from the dead. 
And so the resurrection is our objective. The resurrection is our purpose of our faith. And so Jesus came as the first fruits of the resurrection. If he did not, if he did not rose from the dead, he did indeed rose from the dead. But if he did not rose from the dead, there is none of us that can receive salvation. Even though you can uh, live diligently and rightly on this earth, there is no one that can receive salvation. And so Jesus did, did all the work to die and rise from the dead. And so the book of Hebrews said, while he was on this earth, he offered up prayers and prayers and loud cries and tears honestly to the one who could save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. And so Jesus, until the very end of his death, he labored and toiled in his work that he needed to do. And so God himself give, gave him life from the dead. He had given him life when he was still in the, de in the death. We are not religious people. And when I was a layman preacher and evangelist going around the country and, and preaching the word of God, I was centered around the Bibong Methodist Church, which is where I came from. And I received in invitations from many different churches around the countryside. And so they saw the spiritual reality of what was happening within my ministry. And so there were many church leaders, there were many Christian leaders who had gathered uh, in a united fellowship, they had gathered in, a, in an assembly, and they had all in union uh, invited me, uh, invited me as a special preacher and evangelist. There were many well-known Christian leaders at that time. And they invited me to lead a crusade. To lead a crusade. There were many uh, well-renowned Christian leaders. They had done so because they understood and recognized me as a very gifted and spiritual preacher and evangelist. They had recognized that there was something very special about me. And it was because I had a spiritual calling, a very special spiritual calling that I could conduct all that public ministry that I had did. It was absolutely astounding. And then after, after this period, I s established a independent church. It's because of religion and uh, constrained ideas of religion are so prevalent in the Christian churches in Korea, it is very constraining and restraining because, because the Christian church is currently in a rut of religion and dogmatism. So I had it in my heart to uh, break away from all these things. And so I firmly decided within my spirit that I needed to establish an independent church and so it was with with these ideas and principles that I had established I had established an independent Christian church whether it was uh, by material affairs material affairs or spiritually I had received great persecution I had received great persecution for all the good things that I was striving to do. There were many obstacles that were going against me from people. And what was the reason for all this? Because I knew very clearly the way of the calling that I needed to go. And so Jesus spoke by his word to the woman. 
Oh, God, 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 uh, God spoke to the woman uh, by the pains of labor birth. Will you give birth to your child? And this is what God had prophesied to the woman. The woman would give birth to the child in great pains of labor. And so from that time it was spoken to her until now, the pains of labor of childbirth are continuing to proceed. They are continuing to take place. And so for and so in the same way, in our church for 50 years, we have been striving, striving and laboring in the pain of childbirth. When will this ever end? It has never ended. And so all the disciples would come after Jesus and then Paul would come and they would all be martyred for their faith. And so all this is a part of the participation of the pains of labor. And it will continue. It will continue to be so. And then the senior and then the overseer Overseer Pastor Sung Young Kim will continue to do so. It will it will continue to happen. Otherwise, there will be there will be there will be great there will be greater disaster. Those who refuse to continue to do those works that are entrusted to them that are entrusted to them will be destroyed. We have received the blessing and calling of God. If, if one refuses to, to do those works and refuse to endure the pains of childbirth and labor, they will be destroyed. And so, and so those, those who become hard in heart and refuse to join in the pains of labor, they will fall into religion and corruption and to religious mysticism. And so on that final day, on that final day, they will be, dis they will be distinguished. They will be dis differentiated on the, re on the judgment. Some will go to the resurrection of life and some will go to the resurrection of judgment. And so on the judgment, they will either be judged or they will resurrect. And so the one who has written the Bible, the one who has authored the Bible is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that drives out demons, that performs healings and signs and miracles and wonders. And so it is the Holy Spirit who testifies to the living God. And so he is the one who has spoken to us, the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit will be the one, the Lord Jesus will be the one who will judge the living and the dead. You must read the, these books of Beria that contain these, that contain the substance of what I'm trying to say. They will also, they will absolutely be judged on the day of the resur on the day of the resurrection when the Lord Jesus comes. We do not uh, realize the the reality of this spiritual reality until. Because we are currently in this flesh. Uh, the Bible clearly states that the day of the coming of the Lord will be most fearful and they will be it will be colossal. It will happen from one end of the earth to the other. Consider the bomb of Hiroshima, that the atomic bomb that took place in Shima, Hiroshima in Japan. They were all suddenly dead. They were all suddenly destroyed at one moment. They were wiped out from one end to the other. It is the same thing. And so all, all, all those crops, all those crops, those villages, those streets have all been wiped out. 
all in one moment because of the bombs that took place, such as uh, Hiroshima. And so those, and, uh, um, and the bombers, the bombers that concentrated on those main, on those main buildings, like the school gym buildings or school buildings, or council buildings, and they would concentrate, and then afterwards they will be wiped out. In the same way, the Bible clearly speaks in Revelation, in the book of Revelation, that a third will be completely destroyed, and a third will be saved, and will, and will remain. And so, and so, in a in a in a sudden moment. In less than a second, all these things will take place. Some will be destroyed and some will remain and be saved. And what? remember what Jesus spoke. You go and preach the kingdom of God and let the, bury, let the dead sort out their own dead. And so at one moment, all these things will happen in the same way uh, that the bomb of Hiroshima... Uh, performed all that work of destruction. All these things will happen immediately on the day of the resurrection. This will happen at one instant. At that single moment, it will all happen. So those, those who are driving the car or those who are dining, at, dining in the restaurant at one moment, at one single moment in less than a second, one will go into the judgment and one one will even go into the bosom of Abraham and one will go to the resurrection of life. There will be these various distinctions. And so, uh, in accordance with, with, with these things, your spirit will know the way that you need to go in accordance with the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so, uh, to come to think of it, I myself, out of my all my rel relatives and my friends, I am of the greatest age. I am still alive, even though everyone has passed away. I consider myself as very blessed. All except for me have all passed away. And yet when the Lord speaks His word and He speaks, Come, so on that day the Lord will take me. And then once one has passed away, and so while we are on in the flesh, we cannot transcend time and space because we are in the flesh. But once one passes away, uh, you will go into paradise. It's because I'm so full of joy and so full of freedom and so full of the blessing of God that one will be sure to know in the direction that he is supposed to go in his spirit after he passes away. It is because I have faith in the resurrection. The resurrection is because I believe in the resurrection. And so, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 states, if there is no resurrection, then our service, our service is also in vain. Our preaching to others that they believe, to our distant relatives and family, it is all in vain. And all your work, all your work of faithfulness, your labor and toil, it is futile. If this, if this happens and there is no resurrection, if there is no resurrection, we are to be pitied more than all men. We are to be pitied the most. While you are on this earth, do not strive excessively to seek for the prosperity and the, and the increase of your wealth and, and estates. No, the purpose of our life, our, our life of faith in this church is for the sake of the resurrection. God gives on this earth the rain and the food and the health and the crops all on this, all to all to all men, whether they are believers or non-believers. And so, there is no one who can eat beyond, that can eat beyond those three meals that we are portioned to each day. 
We do not. And so there were those who had mistaken Jesus as those who would give him, who would give them free jobs, or give them uh, portions of work for them to do as their jobs. This is a great misunderstanding. And so we are not those who seek for the purpose and desires of the wealth or on this, on, in this world. I am the resurrection and the life. The resurrection is that which gives life to the Spirit. Do you believe in this resurrection? I do not speak anything. I speak only of that which is contained within the Bible. If you have no resurrection, or your service, your obedience, your labor and toil is, is in vain. The Bible clearly sp speaks these things exactly as it is recorded. So that we can strive to be full of the Holy Spirit and strive to labor and toil. What is the purpose? For the sake of the resurrection. For the sake of the resurrection, we do all these things. Do you have no proper understanding and, uh, and idea of what is supposed to be going on in the resurrection? So on the Lord's Day, we are supposed to, as commanded, perform the Lord's Supper. And so on the day of the resurrection, we will become the blood and flesh of Jesus Christ. We, because we are fed on these things, and we who all our lives had drinking the blood and flesh of Jesus. We have done all these things and we have even participated in the Lord's Day. And, and, uh, and this is in deep connection with baptism by immersion. What is the reason why we are baptized in immersion? So that we bury the old self, the old man. And so we originally were all destined to go to hell and to destruction. We were destined to be lost in destruction. And, and, and the law of Moses had given all these things that is, that is the flesh, death, destruction. But having been baptized by immersion, we have buried all these things through baptism. And we have been united with the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so the authority of death, the authority of death, the authority that, uh, that we go to hell, it has been completely thrown off by us receiving baptism in immersion. So the question is, will you participate in the resurrection? Will you participate in the resurrection? What is it that you believe in? Will you remain to be a child of hell to go to hell? Or a child of God to go to the resurrection? And so, Jesus had abolished all the law and its requ requirements. We have been set free. We have been set free from death and the law through, immersion, through baptism by immersion. And because we are set free from sin, and so the wages of sin is death. And we were originally in death. And so having come out of it, the authority of the devil has been made void. And why? Because we now possess the resurrection. And now the devil cannot put a hand on us. And so the power of death cannot lay a hand on us, on our spirits. So, the death and the resurrection as done by Jesus, the, re the death and resurrection of Jesus, by which we also have abolished all sin and all death and all curses. We ourselves have been made assured of this in faith in Jesus. And how? By receiving baptism by immersion. By, by baptism in the water. And when we go into the water, we become united with the death of Jesus. We go into the death of Jesus. 
And we, just as Jesus, by his death, he had abolished the law and his stipulations and requirements, we have buried, buried the law by entering into the water of baptism. We have buried the old man with all his desires and thoughts. And so we will enter into that eternal life. We are united with this when we come out of the water. And we become united with this resurrection through baptism by immersion. And so people will say, oh yes, sure, I have received baptism. And so, and they will try to reminisce it and they will try to remember it. Uh, baptism is not a uh, not a memory, does not remain a memory. It is a spiritual reality. It is an experience. You possess this. You possess this. You hold, you have a hold of it. It is a real and spiritual experience. Just as, just as from the seed will come out the shoots, the shoots, the plant, the seed, the outspring. So it is the same concept as we live our lives of faith and finally enter into eternal life. And then we, why all for the sake of the resurrection in which we will finally participate in? And we who have, the moment we have received baptism by immersion, now we we undergo the process of growth in the same way that from a seed comes the sprout, the stem, the flower, the leaves, the 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 fruit. It is the same idea of the process of spiritual growth. And so it, will, but yet it will be completely useless if we did not know the truth and value and reality of the resurrection. And so on the Lord's Day, what is the purpose that we all gather together? And so Jesus died. Jesus died on that Friday, on that uh, on that day of the Friday. And then after that day would be the day of the Sabbath, the rest. And then on that day after the Sabbath, which is the Lord's day, on this day the Lord would resurrect. And so, and this is all, all mentioned in the book of Revelation. On the Lord's day, on the Lord's day, on this day, you do not come empty handed, but you come to God with your holy offerings and your service and your and your labor for where your material treasure is there your heart will also be where your material wealth is your heart will also follow where your material wealth is and where you place this there your heart will also be so you you so you hand this to God through the church I do not say things, these things because I'm out of my mind or any other reason. I say and speak these things for the sake of the resurrection. All for the sake of the glory of the resurrection. The Lord had opened my eyes and he had made me see visions. He, gave, he had given me spiritual power. He had given me inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And then he had given me growth. And this is the same for all of us. And so what is the Lord's day? And so on the Lord's day, you proclaim and believe that you have been set free from the law. For the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death, as is written in the book of Romans. We have been set free from the law of sin and death by the Holy Spirit. We are now free. We are those who have been set free. We are those who are set free. We are those who are set free. We are set free from the law. We are set free from the law. We have been completely freed from the law of Moses. And so on this faith, 
On this, by this faith, we believe in the resurrection. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. And I also will rise from the dead. I also will rise from the dead. I will also rise from the dead. Do not speak of the law of Moses. Speak of the resurrection. Speak of the spiritual reality of the resurrection. This is reality. And so you must go on this path. This is no memory. This is no mental memory. This is an experience, reality. So in the, in the same way that we are going on a process of driving in a highway, constantly driving, so we are going towards that direction, that sign and direction of the resurrection. And so I am a saint of the resurrection. I am a saint of the resurrection. If you believe this, say amen. The resurrection. By this power that comes from the resurrection, you drive out demons. So all those demons within you, within your flesh, you do not forgive these demons. Do not let them go. Drive them out by the power of the resurrection. Drive them out by the power of the resurrection. We are those who are united with the death and resurrection of Jesus in one direction. So we go towards the sign of it, the resurrection, towards the resurrection, the hope of the resurrection. And so even Paul himself confessed, yet having known, having known about, about the knowledge of the law and about the knowledge of life and death, Yet he considered this all rubbish compared to the knowing, the, the blessing of knowing Jesus Christ and knowing that he needed to go towards the resurrection. And so for the sake of the faith of the resurrection, we are undergoing the pains of childbirth. And we undergo the pains and struggles of childbirth. This is the time for the sake of the faith of resurrection. Not by doctrines, not by rituals, religious rituals, but, but going towards the sign of the resurrection. Now, please stand up. Please stand up now. And so you give thanks to God who has given the gift and grace of the resurrection. By, by baptism, by, by baptism, after that and onwards, we are ongoing the process of baptism. We are continuing to experience, experience our baptism until we go finally to that resurrection. Once, once we enter into the resurrection, the devil can have no power over us. He cannot lay a hand on us. And then, once you know this, the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And so the one who gave life to Jesus, who was among the dead, was the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gave life to Jesus from the dead. Say it together. You filthy demons, you filthy demons. You filthy spirits of deception. I have the power of the resurrection. I have the life of the resurrection. Be gone from me. Be gone from my flesh. Be gone from my flesh. Let us all pray out loud together in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray earnestly together in the Holy Spirit. Drive out demons from your flesh. Drive it out by the power of the resurrection. Be gone from me, you enemies, you demons. Be gone from me. Be gone from me. By the power of the resurrection, be gone from me. Be gone from me by the power of the resurrection. Put your right hand on your head, your left hand on your stomach. And within those within within your flesh drive out those filthy and wicked demons that are within your flesh drive it out those filthy and wicked demons 
those will, those filthy, uh, wicked demons that are bothering your flesh or feeding on your flesh, drive it out by the power of the resurrection. Drive it out. Pray earnestly in the Holy Spirit. Drive out all these filthy demons. Pray honestly. Pray more honestly. Holy Father, we pray that this whole church, that all the saints will gather together under the power of the resurrection. We pray, despite the many challenges and difficulties that we have within us and before us, we pray for the sake of the glory of that final day of the resurrection, we pray that you continue to work powerfully within us. We pray in accordance with all these promises that you have given us. And we, and we have fully known that we receive and we testify at the same time to the, to the death and resurrection of Jesus. We pray that you'd work powerfully in us by the Holy Spirit. And on this time, in thanksgiving for that great grace that you've given us during this worship, in thanksgiving, in commemoration of that resurrection of that, that was done by Jesus, and so we give our holy offerings out of great thanksgiving. We pray we may be full of your Holy Spirit that you guide us great power. We pray that you give us your great power in our spirits in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us sit down together and let us uh, humbly give our holy offerings um, in commemoration and thanksgiving of resurrection.
하나님 아버지 Holy God the Father on this day when the Lord has rose from the dead and we commemorate him and we worship him we pray for those souls and their families uh, that they have given you glory we pray for all these families and the souls of uh, their family members that, that they have given thanks to you in the Holy Spirit we pray that your great power and your great uh, aid may come upon them. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless all those who have given out of faith and obedience. May God's blessing come upon all those who have thus given these in the name of Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let us sing the hymn in thanksgiving to uh, give praise for the sake of the resurrection. I will now give the blessing. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the great love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may be with all those who have come to worship and all those who come to listen to the, this message in their spirits forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, do not, do not leave uh, the worship center, but please uh, sit down to watch the video.
Now, Songwak Church has now been 50 years since its founding. And now, I have the idea that we could build up a, a festival out of celebration for the church. But won't many of the people think that that a festival is very burdensome and very tiresome? Wouldn't also the city people would like to participate? Wait. Wait, the fifth, the festive, the festival for the fiftieth year of the founding of this church. We can do it. We can do it. Let us do it. We don't have time. Let's get to business. So, to our brothers and sisters and neighbors, love, consideration, service, service. There will be a variety of things. There will be many things to buy and to sell. There will be a buffet. There will be a flea market. Let us be humble and let us be considerate to uh, to help each other. We are those who serve. Of all ages and of all sexes, we can all enjoy and we can all serve at this festival. Now is the time where we start. When they come, it will be, it will be the beginning of our festival. From May the 4th to the 5th, so the festival begins. Along with all, let us all start, start the race for all the Songwak people. The Songwak festival along with the Kuro city. Are you all ready for the festival? Now, the, the festival is less than two weeks' time. It is less than two weeks' time. Let us all ready ourselves and prepare ourselves. Let us, let us commemorate and be thankful uh, for the foundation of our church by participating joyfully and thankfully in this festival. Let us all join joyfully out of great thanksgiving. And so I'm very thankful that we have all gathered here. This is very momentous. You can see all these faces who are gathered here to worship uh, on Resurrection Day. And so many Many of the various uh, worship centers, the members of the worship centers have come here to participate in this worship all the way to Seoul from many distant areas. Let us give thanks. Let us let us ask through the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit will aid us and support us in our spirits and let us further strive to protect the church, to build up the church. These are critical issues. These are critical, critical joy and joyful issues. Let us, in accordance with the calling we have received, let us fulfill all these things. Let us gather our strength together. Hallelujah! Let us encourage each other. Let us protect your church. Let us protect our church. Let us protect our church. Thank you very much. Let us sing the first and the third verse of the Berian hymns. Thank you. 
권위가 있는 곳에 자유가 있다 권유를 배우는 예수의 주님 인자는 그리스도 하나님 아들 부활은 성도들의 참소망이 겸손은 아버지가 살아나신다 성경은 불변하는 하나님 말씀 새 영광이 있다 헌신을 기뻐하는 예수의 주님 구원은 예수 이름 하나님 이름 열유한 바다스로 찬송 인내와 부활로서 승리하셨다 세계가 변화되는 예수의 복음 온누리가 성령으로 하나는 대배 And so, from 2:50 will come the uh, the praise worship. I all encourage you. It is imperative that we all gather together to worship, also in the praise worship that will come in 2:50. And let's all come out of the worship with with greetings and warmth. Talk with each other. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.
Oh, no, no, no.